Okay. You hear me in the Zoom? Okay, as you can imagine, this is the first uh, talk of the lecture of the school, and we are facing these Zoom problems, but it seems now uh, fine. So, welcome everyone again to uh, the School of Information, Noise, and Physics of Life. Um, I try to, to try to welcome Serbia and hope I did well. So, I will start today um, giving and giving an introduction to biophysics. So, Vladimir explained that but he said wrongly that I'm a world expert in biophysics. It's not true. I work mostly on uh, non equilibrium thermodynamics, but uh, applied also to biophysics, biological systems. Uh, but we do a lot of activity also in biophysics, and in particular, we have a course in HPP dedicated to this topic. And today, I'll try to give you an overview of what is biophysics, why I find biophysics interesting, and uh, what type of physical, what kind of physicists or mathematicians do uh, about biological processes. It will be an overview, so I won't give many formulas, it will be practically still a formula. So I start a bit with motivation, examples and focus, biophysics. Why do we do biophysics? Uh, okay, this is a sketch, first, because you can see cells by molecules under a microscope. So one, two centuries ago, we couldn't see our cell bites at the scale of nanoscale. Now we can do this. And also we can measure physical properties of biological systems. Before it was just pure observation, which was the discovery of the DNA, crystallization of DNA, and you could see this nice double helix spiral. Uh, but that was just visual, it was not about forces, velocities, etc. Now, thanks to the experimental techniques, we can also measure physical properties of biology. Here, um, I show some examples. You can see the microscope, instance. Human cells, human cells, and then um, under the, under the microscope, as you can see, here it says, please record. So, it has to be me. No, we are recording. Okay. So, um, these are uh, human cells under the microscope, and you can see the typical size of human cells and, 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 and microns. And just to remember some of you, which may not remember, a micron is 10 to the minus 6 meters. So in one meter, there are 1 million microns. Idea. This is a, a, an example of a bacteria, which is another unicellular organism, which has a size of around 1 micron. And of course, keep in mind that not all human cells look the same. This is something you have to keep in mind. I don't know if you are a biologist or not, but it is not the same a neuron, which is a cell like this, like a wire with a small body and a very long tail, than a, a red blood cell, which looks like a disc. So think about this, the human cells are varied and specified. But the range of sizes is varied. Right. And here is an example of a virus, and we know very well, unfortunately, which are much smaller. You see here, this would be a scale. Is, uh, 0 0.1 microns, micro, so they are of the size of nano. So most of the important, relevant, biological and um, process happen at this stage, very big time. So you say, um, this is the size of cell around microns, but we could do biophysics at different scales. We could look at cells on its own, also we could look inside and look at organelles and parts of the cell, which are even smaller of the other even a micro like a bacteria, or we could go smaller like a virus, which is a nano, or we could go even smaller, smaller like a protein, which has to be over 10 nanometers, or a lipid, and less, or even do biophysics at this level of a single molecule. There are, there are scientists who do biophysics, how a molecule binds to another one. And as we know, for example, in this current pandemic, it's very important to know how virus attaches to a cell. This happens in case. Yeah. Nano or even less atomic. So, so one, one as a physicist could attack biology in different scales. So atomic, atomic cellular, cellular, and even beyond. So maybe you are interested in knowing how birds fly and how they make groups and flocks, and that's even bigger. This is a meter. So if I say 
we want to introduce biophysics, it's sad because many problems and many skills. This is really um, one of the first messages I want to give you. In particular, what I do, I study regime like nano to micro, where fluctuations are very important, I would say. Of course, it's also important. And bigger, larger scales is also important. For instance, ecology is also a larger scale. Humans and interact between us, and there's ecosystems, and things that are much bigger than, than a cell. Okay, so just to illustrate a bit, uh, here are a couple of videos. Uh, it's not going very fast. But this is a, a trapped bacteria. It's attached to a glass fiber. And it's trying to move uh, to find food and making some uh, range of motion. Not going very fast. Uh, but just to show you that the cellular motion is particular. So look at these videos and say there's something living, alive here. And as a physicist, I would like to know what makes this motion a signature of life different to putting, for example, a grain of, of, of pollen in water. This is one of the questions I think is best. Here, the video is not going very well, but these are micro swimmers that look looking for food and they find here a crystal of sugar. So they can sense the sugar close by, they are hungry in the cluster and need to get energy and food. Okay. So, another important example that we will see today, this afternoon, by Ivatolic, for sure, will prepare a spectacular seminar. Is a cell division. You can see here cell division. How oh, you go to a biology book, you will see the cell division. You see a cartoon. Cell, genetic information, chromosomes that divides into two that are identical. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Copy the cell. Now we go from one to two. So you have to figure out, by looking at this process, that far from being quite nice, spectacularly perfect in some scenarios. You need to create a cell from a cell to cells, you need something. And you need resources, you need food, you need energy. This is something that was a bit under the carpet in biology. So biologists didn't study this so much. You know, it happens, we know about DNA, how this process is possible. Uh, rough idea, but now as physicists, we should say, how can you divide a cell into two? It's an open question. And we as a physicist, we can say a lot. But me, as me as someone who studies thermodynamics, no, cannot, cannot divide someone something without giving it energy. This what we call in thermodynamics non-equilibrium, not an equilibrium process. And of course, now, now things are much nicer. You can see television uh, under the microscope. This is real uh, imaging real-time video. Okay, here, here below we have said Iva Tovic's lab, but so she, so she will uh, show these very nice uh, movies where you see the chromosomes, how they divide in real, in real time. time. See, again, again size, size, five microns. microns. So, so, not so not only you can do this, but you can also measure the forces that these uh, chromosomes they are pulling, and this is what brings the physicists to, to make these studies in detail and to propose physics. Now I will keep myself in, in micro scale, as I said, around microns. So I will re um, repeat where are we. This is an example of the macroscopic scale. I will try to divide, let's say, the physical reality into three levels. One is the macroscopic scale where we live, which is um, described by Newton's law. For example, the guy is playing billiard, he hits his ball, and you know. The initial conditions, so where are the balls, the exact force that he's putting in the game, you will be able to predict a bit the dynamics of these balls. This is called Newtonian deterministic dynamics, the macro scale. But if you look at the mass of this person at smaller small scales, you will find these fibers, um, which are responsible of mass contraction and using power. And here, here, the power is generated by a very small, small tiny uh, motors, motors yeah, machines that are of size nanometers, pulling all together the fibers so that it can all together play the yard nice way. So, the 
most of the signal of this, this machine, machine's motor is extremely affected by noise. These are in a thermal environment. There are water molecules around or other molecules uh, interacting with this motor. The motor moves in a sort of a stochastic or random way. It has a direction, but there are fluctuations. So here we cannot use classical mechanics. And there will be a lot of lectures talking about this, stochastic dynamics, Markov process, probability theory. So things are probabilistic, that there is some random this level. This is why I'm very interested to start here. And as I said, you can even go smaller and smaller and look at uh, okay, one protein on the leg of the motor, and this is the atomic scale. Well, again, you cannot use classical Newton dynamics, you cannot use stochastic dynamics, but you go to solve such a small um, scale that you need to use quantum, quantum mechanics. So, they say many scales, many tools from physics, and I will mostly today discuss uh, at this level, which is for me very interesting and fun. So, for instance, I'm talking. Ah, by the way, if you have questions, please interrupt me because this is for students, not, for, not a um, conference. Okay. okay, so this is one of the fibers, the muscle. If you zoom in, you will find this structure. There are fibers, or acting fiber, which are pulled by. Uh, these other, other motor, motor proteins, proteins that are called myosins that, that look like they're all together, we can, we can bind and unbind the acting, acting filaments and also pull. We are able to show now. Here, now. here, here this, is this is something very traditional. Hometown, ship, road, and uh, use energy, energy to, to, move to move both. both in, this case, in this case, this myosin motors. Here is the drawing, and this would be cheap water to generate power. Of course, of course here, people who is drawing, they need food, so they need energy to produce work. It's not that something that comes for free. If you don't have breakfast today, you cannot go come here and draw and fast and produce, move things. No? And uh, this is really happening also here. There is a source of energy there. Very energetic molecules that are attached to these myosins, and they use, they take this molecule, which is typically called ATP, uh, they break this molecule, and when the molecule is broken, it gives them a lot of energy that is used then to grow away. So there are cycles, um, and this appears in many books in biology, biophysics, which what happens is they are complicated. The dynamics that are simplified in a way that a very energetic molecule touches this motor and then this molecule hydrolyzes, so hydrolyzes means breaks smaller molecules and this generates energy that can be used by this motor to attach this filament and also to pull from the filament. And once this motor is produced, these molecules are released and the dynamics starts again. So then there is a cycle, cycles that happen all the time in biology. Molecules are attached, detached, broken, and a type of energy here is chemistry is converted into another type of energy. So one thing is chemical components, another thing is like if I take this bottle of water and they move. This is also changing the energy. I take it up here, I increase the potential energy of the water. But here, a conversion of energy. There is chemical energy, chemical, energy, chemical reaction, reaction that is transformed into work, into mechanical energy used to move, to move this one. Okay. This, this is, of course, an illustration. And again, I'm trying to be very didactic just to introduce this to different models. There are many, it's not the only one. This, for example, is called kinesin. It's a motor. This is an animation, it's not a real detail. It should be this molecule, this motor protein, is able to transport vesicles in the cell. For example, this would be a round spherical vesicle which has food, which has nutrients for the cell. And you may think, okay, when I eat molecules that are broken, they enter into vesicles, they enter the cell, and then they 
if you use freely, like if you put a small object in the sea, okay, this would be the case, we wouldn't be alive. We need things are carried and moved fast, like the post office, you send a letter, because you need a machine that takes care of it. These machines are quite tiny, and they can move incredibly big objects, much 10 or 20 times much bigger than the motor. So this is quite fascinating. This happens in all our cells. So without this, we couldn't, we couldn't have cellular um, transport and efficient, efficient functioning of cells. So this is sensor for life. Not only things to be used, but there are, there are small machines that move things in, in highways, in trucks, in rails. This is done by this small machine. machine. I, say, I say here, I put like a very sketch, sketchy sentence. I, I realize it quickly and I move. I mean that every time, every time this machine does a step, it's because it's using chemical energy. It takes this highly energetic molecule, it breaks, gives a lot of energy, the motor, and then it can do a step. So things do not move by magic, it's just conversion of chemical energy into mechanical work. Okay. So again, so this is a classic movie, movie. you can see it from, from the 90s, so we know it a long time, long time ago. ago. And again, and again um, every time the motor makes a step, there is a cycle. cycle. The motor has attached a, a molecule, the molecule has broken, the motor has given energy to the motor, the motor, the motor makes a step, and then it, and then it releases this molecule, this molecule like adding, fuel adding fuel in every step, and then it starts, then it starts again. There are cycles. Cycle. Energy and release energy, we call free energy. Uh, it's a sensor for things. So you need molecules that are highly energetic. And uh, okay, again, this is uh, I try to be didactic. I reiterate this is um, this happens at small scales, nanometers. Just waiting. <laughs> the predictor uh, updates. <laughs> so every step of the motor, as I said, the motor is nano. One step is nanometer, 10 to the minus 9 meters. The steps happen in very fast times, 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Uh, and, no, sorry, this motor particularly makes one step per second. There are there are processes that happen 10 to the minus 6 cycles, like mining or mining, or changing changes in, the, in, in molecules. And the energy, as I said, for every step of the motor, one needs to burn a molecule. And the amount of energy that this molecule gives you is uh, of the order of KBT. KBT is the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. It's the energy that a uh, 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 water molecule has when it vibrates. That's KBT. But the, this chemical reaction gives you more than KBT. If you around 10 KBT, because if, if it would be just one KBT, the energy of a water molecule, you won't be able to move because one single water molecule will, will drag you behind. You, you need something more energetic, so around 10 KBT, which is around 10 to the minus 21 joules. So to make one step, the motor uses a very small energy, which is okay, very small compared to us, to our okay, moving around. Small object for one meter, this will be one joule. Uh, this is 10 to the minus 21. Okay. So these are the scales we are, we are talking about. And these are two side challenges. So, on one side, we would like to understand these motors, how they work, why they move like this, how efficient they are. But on the second, we would like to take inspiration from this motion to design nano machines in the future. So this is one of the he um, and, and, and challenges of the descent. Like you would like, for example, to take a drug, drug and put it in like a machine that goes to a specific organ and puts the drug in this place. It doesn't go through what your body. And for this, we need nano machines, small, small devices. So learning about biology at this case is useful. So it will be useful, very useful in the future. Of course, a big time. Something very, Something very important is that, is that um, when you look at these small scales, mesoscopic, <coughs> things move like in this movie. Like in this movie. Okay. 
Here, this is a small object, colloidal particle, that's the size of a micron. This is the size of a cell. And if you put one of these objects, trap it with a laser trap, and you look at it in time, this is an experimental movie, it's not a, it's not a computer game, this is a real experiment. If you look at the particle, it moves, it shakes in all directions. So it looks like Drunk, no. <laughs> left, right, up, down, all the time. So there are what we call fluctuations. This system is fluctuating in time. And if you do an experiment and you measure the position of this particle as a function of time, you will see that it has this shaking motion. This is what we call fluctuating or stochastic motion. It's very different from the yard. When the yard the trajectory, you how the ball moves, it will be a straight line. It is smooth. At this scale, these things are not smooth. You have a microscope, a laser, I see where the particle is. Quite noisy. This is what we call fluctuation. Simple. Simple. Position of this particle, fluctuates. So, in physics, who was the first? Talk about fluctuations. So, um, the study of comes, it's back to Brown. Robert Brown actually was not a physicist, but a botanist. He was looking at um, pollen grains under the microscope. And you see here that he was looking at the pollen grains. And the microscope, you could see. <laughs> Very unfortunate and unlucky with this projector, but this guy, the pollen grains in water. Also shake and move in a random, in a random fashion. So it, so it looks like the dynamics is not smooth, not, it's not deterministic. deterministic. So Brown, so Brown when he saw this, this so, okay. Okay. It's, happening. it's happening here. Are they, Are they alive? Okay. Okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> the bacteria I was showing you at the beginning of the representation is alive. It's alive. So why? why do they move? This is curiosity. curiosity no? Why? Why move and why do we move like this? In this straight line. So, so it took a long time to find a reasonable, find a reasonable um, explanation. explanation. You can see here in this ball and doing this um, following, following the center of mass of the particle. particle. It has this type of cable. cable. And, and the key answer was given by Einstein. Einstein was, Einstein was the person who said, okay. Brownian okay. motion. Particle is a manifestation of the thermal energy of the molecules comprising the particles in bulk. So Einstein had the idea that the, this ball is moving uh, erratically because of the interaction of the, this um, particle with the environment. Okay. It's like if you are in a crowded environment and you are a big guy and you are surrounded by very, very small guys that are quick, very, very, very fast, very quick, and they are hitting to you all the time. It's a simple idea, but this is this before. You didn't even, even think there were atoms. So, so how can you have this idea uh, 100 years ago? So Einstein was a big uh, supporter of atomic theory. Nature, matter is made atoms. You believe in atoms. Think the atoms, then the erratic motion of this particle is nothing. Quite nothing. And indeed, what Einstein found was a theory for the mean square displacement of this particle. So if you, look so if you look at this particle for a long time, you do a trajectory, on average, it will go the same amount of time to the left and to the right. So it will not drift. You're not pushing the particle. But if you put the particle and you wait a long time, it starts to diffuse and move around. So if you look at the square of the position of the particle, and you take the mean, this means, this means I do many experiments. I put the particle in the center and I look at it for a second. And I do it again. I look at it for a second. And I do it again. And I collect the x square after one second. This quantity, which is called mean square displacement, is grows linearly with time. The more time you wait, the bigger is the diffusion. Where is the part? And this was okay. This was. Shown experimentally, but Einstein developed the theory which showed this is, this is, this is the case. This is the case. So, 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 so,
So this is a bit, is a bit of the basis also of biophysics, right? Identifying, Identifying what is the physical uh, model for diffusion. Diffusion happens a lot in biology. It's simple. Excuse me, uh, yeah. if I could uh, interrupt you. Yes. First, one comment, as you mentioned, Einstein may be one uh, interesting information. Uh, the first wife of Albert Einstein was uh, Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, it is, I don't know, is it correct, but uh, somehow it is like, uh, you need that uh, the equations were uh, written by Miller. And I don't know, is it uh, like uh, an opinion with, uh, here because she was Serbian, but there is also this version of the history. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, and I have to update. You, you, you <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Let me go to us. But you know the first time she was from Serbia. Yeah. So, uh, this is. Uh, she was one of the first one, one of the five females in the and she was. Uh, uh, it was from mathematician, mm -hmm. and I said that uh, I think that didn't know that she was still in the uh, 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 evidence, evidence, evidence that there is evidence she really uh, is part of the world. There was also very, very uh, funny story uh, between Einstein and Mary Moreau. When uh, Marilyn Monroe told uh, Weinstein, uh, oh, imagine that uh, two or past the uh, yeah, baby, and uh, the baby is clever or IQ, and nice looking uh, as me. And uh, Einstein answered, yes, but I'm uh, concerned what uh, it uh, has to do with it. Why? One more reason for the interruption is that uh, we are now at 12.02 and uh, Andre Barat is supposed to be connected, uh, so maybe we would need to, uh, it is too late on his side, I think. So if you want, I can. No, no, but uh, maybe to, to see it, uh, Andre, I, no, no, I would uh, like to hear the whole presentation. I believe that the whole room would like, but uh, it is also, we have to check. Uh, I can break uh, it into parts. Yeah, I, I don't know. have a problem. But maybe to see it, is Andre there? And I cannot. It's, I cannot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Host. Yes, I'm here. I was just unable to unmute myself. Andre is. I'm here. Can you hear me? But we cannot hear him. You cannot hear me? Hello? Hi? Yeah, we can hear him. You can hear only, only then, then in the. Okay, they can hear me. You inside. Hello, Andre. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, Andre, uh, so uh, maybe it is a good idea if uh, Edgar finish uh, one part, it will be soon. Yes, yeah. right. soon. And yeah, then uh, you, could, you could connect. Is it fine? That's fine. Can you hear me now? We cannot hear. We will resolve the, the issue in the meantime. But uh, I hope that you said yes. <laughs> 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 okay, that is okay. Okay, <laughs> okay so <laughs> I will speak until 12 20 and then we connect. Very good. And because what I'm going to say is, is I think quite useful for, for the lecture of Andre, which is um, that this uh, very important historical uh, note by Vladimir. I just wanted to explain a um, concept that will appear 
microscopic scale has statistical nature. So if you take this particle I'm telling you and you prepare the particle in x equals zero today, put it there and you look at it, you may see the motion of this particle, the x position, plus to two time. And if you do the same experiment one day later, put also the particle x equal to zero, you will see the motion following this red trajectory, which is not exactly the same, you will see. Okay. But they prepare experiment in the same conditions. This is because of the statistical nature of Brownian motion. This is called stochastic process. Stochastic process is a process in which you start given in a condition, you can have as a function of time, different outcomes of this phenomenon. Okay, in the stock market, something like this happens. You can have a stock option that has value in the market today, plug to it, time, and tomorrow maybe you can start in the same position in the market, then have a different outcome like this. Okay, here it is very important to, to note that what does it mean to prepare a system in the state? It means in this case, I, I see the particle, I cannot only track the particle. I don't see the molecules of the bath. So I have the particle there, but the molecules of the bath, I don't see them. It's key in the stochastic process. There are some there are variables that I don't see. And there are many. They are very quick. So the motion of these water molecules is quick. I cannot see. So I do a model only for X. And this model has noise. The noise is used to model all the rest of the environment. And of course, I prepare my experiment in the same way because the particle is exactly the same place. But the bath molecules typically are going to be in different places if I start the experiment. So this is an important remark. But you will see in Andres' models, in the models I use, Rafael, many of the talks, you will see this type of phenomenon. The one that I mentioned, the plastic process, is this type of solution. This is in two dimension. It will be the motion. It's not as a function of time, but the molecule or the particle starts here and falls and draws this trajectory x, y space. This is with two dimensions. But if you have three, okay. I have a question. Yes. 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 Y
process. Markov jump process. And this, and this Andre will explain in 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> because he's a big passionate of this motor, which we use quite a lot in, in biophysics. Uh, so, like uh, so these are like two classes of models that are commonly used. So one is Langevin equations. So one is Langevin equations, and, and the other is called Markov process. jump process. And both are connected. And both are connected but in a way. But they, they, are they, they are widely used and, and they are very accurate to describe, to describe this type of process. I don't know with time how much, uh, but okay, just to say that um, looking, looking at this projection, we realize that we will not study the particle position as a number anymore, but as a distribution. Here, x goes to rho of x. We look at distributions. It has statistical nature. You see. If I was at zero, time zero, time zero. <laughs> now at, at a later time, time got two, and two different possible, possible states. So it is important to study what is the, what is the probability that I will end up here. The stochastic process, we keep a um, tool that we use is probability theory. If you are a mathematician, you are a good prob probabilist, you, you know probability theory, you could do and, uh, and study very Basic way, statistical physics is the basis of the equilibrium thermodynamics, but also by physics. And I think with time, uh, okay, I just finished with this slide before Andre comes, and it's also um, motivating uh, to this talk, in which I'm showing that um, in physics there are relevant, so you can have again this colloid or radium particle, and you can make it move uh, out of equilibrium. So you can put a force field that is pushing this particle in one direction. So there is an average tendency of the particle to go here, but there are red events. And the particle can also move backwards against the, the force. Okay, this is key. Okay. This is key. Okay. We see red events, and we are more interested in the red events than in the typical. Okay. Myself, as a, my curiosity, I'd like to understand how uh, likely is to see a very extreme straight yeah, extreme fluctuation, which is quite relevant in biophysics. And don't, not only we see this in physics, matter that is plastic particle or glass particles, but we also see this in living systems. And I'm trying to the presentation is living, but it's not helping. Okay. I just wanted to tell you that if you look, you track the position of a single motor. <laughs> I see it here, but okay, it's okay. <laughs> sorry, it's a relevant, but the connection. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, 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 give me a second. Seconds. Uh, it will be an example of a, a logical system that also has very bad. So here, so here, this is sketch of an experiment where you can track the motion of a motor step by step. Here, a step is a nanometer, much very very tiny, and you can see as a function of time where is the motor along the field. And you see that it moves up, up every time. This is position versus time. Every time it's up, it means a step forward. But sometimes it's a back step. Sometimes the motor is moving backwards. Even though it has energy to move forward and to move a, a cargo or a vesicle in one direction. So really events happen, and they're quite important to characterize uh, the efficiency of this motor. So we end up here. It's just um, try to 
introductory, very introductory talk to show you the relevance of fluctuations in biology at small scales. And I hope Andrea will, will continue with this topic, and tomorrow I continue with this. Yeah. So, thank so, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was very, very interesting, very good. You like it? You like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation.